Ed Moriarty. I'm an instructor here at the MIT Edgerton Center. And uh, for the past eight, ten years, I've been doing a lot of work with um, outreach in high schools and some middle schools, uh, focused on science, technology, engineering, and math, uh, although I really believe in art to be in there, too. The thing that we've been doing recently here, um, an outgrowth of, of many years of activities, is the Engineering Design Workshop. Now, the Engineering Design Workshop that we run here, uh, usually during the month of July, the mornings during the month in July, is uh, an opportunity for local area high school students to come to MIT and really get their fingers dirty with um, some fun engineering design problems. The engineering class uh, is a four-week class and students meet here for three hours a day. Uh, and for the first week, most of the teams are choosing projects and brainstorming ideas. And um, we also do some mini, mini lessons on some physics and um, relevant science and engineering topics uh, for the projects. But then by the third and fourth week, the students are completely engaged in building the projects. So they come in in the morning, start working, and they work straight through and sometimes wind up staying much later than the, uh, than the normal uh, ending time of the class. Um, what I like about the camp is the building because I get to get my ideas across and pretty much build what I want. Um, I'm making an electric cello. Um, I started playing cello when I was four years old and I just wanted to bring the two things I love the most, music and engineering together and that's why I'm building this electric cello. Um, this is the body of the cello and um, I just carved out the sides and I'm sanding it down with um, rasp and sandpaper. Now, the format we take is very different from any other place that I've seen it done. Uh, the, the format we have is I recruit MIT students who I know to be interested in hands-on project-based learning, and I challenge them to think of a few, you know, two or three projects that they'd find really fun to do personally. You want to just try and we're going to drill them with the full-size bit now. That was just a test. Uh, Ed Moriarty has been teaching this class in some form for many more years than I have, and um, he's really been the inspiration for making the class go in a uh, student-driven direction where the students choose the projects, the students do the work, and the students get the, um, the uh, accomplishment of finishing the project. And Ed puts in um, a ton of time into making sure that everyone has a, a positive experience and also that everyone is always learning while they're, while they're doing so. This summer I was a mentor for the engineering design camp. And what that basically meant was I was sort of an advisor rather than a teacher. So the kids had the projects that they were working on and I would just help them like, oh, so you want to do this? Well, here are a couple of ways that we can do this and which one would you prefer? And I can help you get started on it. After a while, what you have is MIT students who are really interested in a few things and, and high school students starting to be innovative around different technologies. Like, like they let us build what we want. It's really awesome. Um, a lot of people are building really cool things. Like that bird. That's pretty cool. On its way. Can it still fly? We try to create a very special a collaborative environment. We don't so much teach the kids, we instruct them, we teach them how to use the tools, but they come up with an idea, they come up with something they want to accomplish, and we all work together to accomplish it. Hopefully then we teach them the soft skills, uh, the cooperation, what they can do um, when they work together as engineers, and we try to instill in them a love of engineering and also really appreciation for how much they can accomplish when they work together and hopefully they bring it back to their schools and the whole thing spreads. Uh, I think a bunch of them learned about the word compromise. <laughs> it's just a very important lesson to have in life. I don't feel I knew them well enough the way they were before to see exactly how much they've changed now, but I do think they have learned that you have to compromise. Like They, were, they all have alpha type personalities, so it's a good thing that they've learned that sometimes you need to take a step back and let somebody else have the light or at least both of you come together and find a third solution which will probably turn out even better than the first two. It's um, the focus here isn't so much on teaching them electronics and all those things it's on giving every kid exposure to something that's just outside their normal range of activities. So where we lose a little bit on the quality of the instruction we gain in, in the 
Everyone knows that everyone's trying something new. Even the MIT students are known to be trying something new. And the high school students see them actually being challenged to do something that is beyond what they've had to do before. And I, I think that's absolutely perfect. Yeah, one thing I, I really enjoy about the class is that um, oftentimes we choose projects that are interesting uh, to the MIT students as well. So um, I think when the team as a whole is learning together, everyone is, um, everyone's working on the project, everyone's engaged, the role of the teachers and the students starts to be narrowed and everyone is uh, just part of the same team all learning and working together. I think that's one of the big differences about uh, this class than other classes that uh, people would take in school. For instance, the guy who made the car, his name is Brian, um, he was very excited when the car started driving. He started, he brought out his iPhone and took videos of it, like videotaping it. And then after that happened, he wanted to go further. So we increased the number of batteries, so the amount of power that the car is getting, just to see how far it still go. And I think that's really good, because in school, when they give you a task, you do the task and that's it because you were given it and you followed the instructions and when you reach the end, you reach the end. But here, like, we reached the end of the car and it was like, it would be really cool if we could try and make the car go faster or if you try and do this or something like that. And I think, I think that's a good thing because it helps them both feel, feel more of an ownership of this project because it's m even more of their ideas. Like, we helped them get started, but now they're putting even more finishing touches onto it. That's something the school won't teach you. School teaches you to follow a task to the end, but this camp is more about, well, you have some idea of what you want to do, but how can you take it and make it more? And it's always about making it more. <laughs> By the end of the class, uh, the students have gone through a full engineering cycle where they have brainstormed an idea, uh, designed it on paper, and then built it. And the fun part is on the last day when the projects start to come together and people see the thing that they just thought up four weeks ago actually existing in real life, I think that gives them a big sense of accomplishment. So, so what do they get out of this experience? I would say that number one thing they get is a sense of the the passion and the joy the emotional side of trying to achieve of of engaging actively on something that you care about and going for it that that's that's the main thing that they get the topic doesn't really matter to me it happens to be engineering here or art in the case of the uh, the stained glass but they they get a chance to really see what it's like to choose something because they want to and go for it and do a good job at it. That's what they get the opportunity for.